Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all and great to be a part of this forum. And I, too, want to thank uh, General Ham and Absentia and certainly my great teammate, General uh, Guy Swan. It's good to see you, General McQuistian, here and all the other general officers assembled. And to all of our comrades, teammates, and friends, and that's all of you in this audience. Uh, it's wonderful to be next door neighbor uh, and uh, have a battle buddy like uh, Mr. Randy Robinson. I have known him a long time and standing at five feet one inch myself, I continually look up to him as well. That's why I had to bring the podium down. But in all sincerity, it's great to continue the dialogue and talk about some of the challenges that Randy has already acknowledged just in a little bit more detail and then talk about some of the opportunities for in those challenges, we indeed do have some opportunities. Uh, so today's Army operates in a complex environment, increasingly globally engaged environment with unpredictable resources, aging infrastructure, rising costs, emerging missions. All of those present challenges for the installation management community, and Randy talked about some of those. As the Assistant Chief of Staff for Installation Management, my job is the principal Army staff leader to control or to promulgate policies, programmatics, and the resourcing for all of our installations around the globe to the tune of about 156 installations, both in CONUS and overseas. And I do that in partnership with Randy, with uh, Lieutenant General Katie Dahl, and all of our land holding commanders. We've had never had a more critical role, I think, considering today's time. And I'm proud to be a part of this team that helps to go about the business of giving our soldiers, civilians, and family members the most resilient and best installations that we can possibly afford to do. And so as Randy indicated today, we have about 22% of our facilities that are in poor and failing conditions. That's about 33,000 facilities. If we were to buy out those facilities alone, it would take $10.8 billion to get them back up to good or adequate conditions. We assess the impact of our infrastructures across nine facility categories, operations and training, maintenance and production, supply, medical, administrative, housing and community, utilities and ground improvement, and mobility. So to enable mission readiness that Randy talks about and that we talk about, the Army needs a bold shift in its installation resourcing strategy over the next 10 years. Senior Army leaders have advocated for a base realignment and closure should the Secretary of Defense and the administration recommend that. We've said that we need another round. We have 161 million square feet of excess capacity. That's not all contiguous space, and that's why it is inefficient and bowls as well to have another round of BRAC to allow us to become proficient and more efficient at what we do. And so that's what we are advocating for because it is expensive and time consuming doing it the way that we are doing now. We want to bring back every dollar, every cent that we can save to make sure that we put those dollars back into our installations. Current challenges provide us the opportunities, uh, given these challenges, to seize every opportunity to do just that. And so within the AXM, we are looking at and we use a three-pronged strategy, divest, invest, and reshape. Divest, by that I mean that we are divesting of all, all of the lowest uh, priority services and that excess infrastructure that I just spoke moments about. By invest, we are investing resources to build a future Army. You can see some of those investments across the Army cyber enterprise where we are investing in facilities and infrastructure supporting that at Fort Meade, Fort Gordon, Fort Belvoir, and West Point. By reshaping, 
we are reshaping the services commensurate with the priorities that inform readiness. What I want to continually foot stomp is the opportunity that we have with industry, academia, and community leaders outside our gates. And as a former garrison commander myself, right down the road at Fort Lee, Virginia, it seems, Pat, not that long ago, but it was more than a decade, I found myself saying these words. There's no way that we can do what we do inside our gates without the full support and partnership of all of our neighbors and friends outside our gates. And to that end, partnerships are what I believe will be a combat multiplier for us in the installation management community. We enable partnerships at all the local, state, and federal levels of government and private sector organizations. And I think that's a good news story. And let me share with you just a few of the partnerships that are ongoing, many of which you may be already familiar with. Partnerships such as the Army Residential Communities Initiative started not long before 2000, I think 1997, is a great news story. I remember at Fort Hood when we tore down the old 50s and 60s housing there and we were able to put new occupants and residents into new homes and to watch spouses literally cry saying that they could not have afforded a home like the one they were living in or getting at Fort Lee, as was the case in places all around the CONUS. We've also had great success with the privatized Army Lodging Program. It saved us over $20 billion in capital improvements to date. For example, we recently opened the new Staybridge Suites in the Army at Fort Belvoir, and I know many of you have seen that just across from the hospital there. In the energy arena, our partnership efforts have attracted more than $2 billion in capital investments for energy efficiency and renewable energy investments that will pay for themselves and help us avoid more than $200 million in utility bills. Team Maxim and the DA Army Secretariat have partnered successfully for a number of new authorities for municipal services with our host communities, and that continues to be a good news story. Just this past year, we organized and approved six intergovernmental support agreements that will save the Army well over $2.6 million while improving service delivery. Why am I telling you all of this? Because I believe that it is the partnerships that will help us be successful. I think it's our innovative and creative spirit that Randy spoke to as well, innovative ideas that I know we'll have during today's opportunities and forums to discuss. And we are trying to save every dollar so that we can pay for that much needed renovation, update, modernization, recapitalization of our infrastructure as we spoke early. To do this, we must set the conditions for our installations of the future. And I believe that we could possibly explore three ideas toward what could be those future installations that Randy talked about. I think that building flexible and sustainable infrastructure like the DC Convention Center, those multi-purpose facilities that we can make into anything we want on the insides by doing some creative restructuring, I think that would be good for all of us. I think we need to preserve the mission capacity associated with access to secure land, energy, and water that is essential for our Army operations and installations missions. And I think we could look at alternative service delivery. One suggestion that came from a soldier was to build in an opportunity for delivering groceries onto the base. What about that idea for size? You think that might be a good one? I see some smiles out there. We are exploring new ways to be creative and innovative in how we think our installations of the future might be and might look like, but we need all of your ideas and we look forward to that. 
at the end of the day, our goal is to build those adaptive installations that are resilient and ready and integrate with our local communities. Installations are power projection platforms. Installations are areas where our soldiers live, our soldiers train, our families play, and all of us deploy from at a time of need when that time should come. Today is an opportunity for us to see three, communicate, coordinate, and collaborate. I thank you for your time this morning, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.